Hi, folks. Dr. Bob McCauley. Um, just a little aside today, uh, apart from health, and you know, I've been in business now 28 years, and one of the common questions I get, um, you know, is like, how did you start in business? You know, who gave you the money? How did you get going? Well, I'll tell you about that story. Um, I actually didn't start in the health business. I didn't ever think in my life I would become a naturopathic doctor. Um, I really just, uh, I started out in the bottled water business. I was living in New York, um, actually Jersey, and working in New York City, and I saw a, uh, in the business section, New York Times, it said bottled water, this is back in 1992, and it said bottled water is going to be huge in this, this coming decade, in the 90s. And, you know, bottled water was very new back then. There really wasn't much out there other than Evian. So that's, I saw that, and I just went immediately, this is what I want to do. It just hit me. This is what I want. And, um, and I kind of wanted to always move back to Michigan or anywhere but New York because I'd about had enough after five minutes of being there. But, you know, it's a nice place to visit. I love New York City. just don't want to live there. So, uh, you know, I, I got back and see, I had my father and my father was a bottle water. I mean, he was water expert, not a bottle water expert. Uh, he didn't know anything more about bottled water than anybody else, but um, he knew water quality. He, um, you know, uh, went to MIT, got his doctorate in sanitary civil engineering in 1953, came back, taught at Michigan State University, and then started his own engineering company, Wolverine uh, Engineers out of Mason, uh, with another gentleman, and um, that's how he got going. But he was water quality, sewage treatment plants, water purification, this kind of stuff. And he was very, he had a great reputation. And, you know, I everything I knew about water and I learned about water, I learned from my dad. And um, so I decided to get into business for myself. So I started with $5,000 and that was, you know, and that's what I put into the company, $5,000. I wasn't going to spend any more because I said, you know what, you know, because everybody was trying to talk me out of this. Uh, the, they came from the state of Michigan to look at my well and, and inspect it, and they just were telling me, you know, you're crazy. You don't want to get into bottled water. You're just going to lose your money, all this. So I got nothing, but this is never going to work. You're an idiot. Don't do this. And so I thought, well, okay, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe I can make it. Maybe I can't. But uh, I started out $5,000 down in my basement, approved well. There wasn't anything shady going on. I had all the paperwork and everything. And I just started going into, you know, pharmacies. They were big at the time, not like now where you got Walgreens. That They had these pharmacies around and convenience stores. I went into Sparrow Hospital. I sold there. And um, it just took off. I, I got down into some uh, supermarkets in Detroit, shopping center markets. Um, you know, and that's where I learned my trade. I learned that... The, the supermarkets, uh, after being in business about six months, they were going to control my product if I didn't do something about it. But um, I learned how, what a brand was. I had no clue what a brand was. Um, mine was called Michigan Mineral Premium Natural Water. Healthy water, pure taste, nothing better. Uh, that was that was a slogan, and then I decided I bought all these racks because if you want to make it in that business back then, you got a rack and you put your rack on the floor and fill it up, and people come buy that water. And I mean, I outsold everybody. Now, how I started this business really was with Target, believe it or not. Uh, back then, you could just walk into Target anywhere, find the grocery manager, he was a T3, and uh, pitch it to him. And um, and I got more and more confident as I went along. And, but I told him, believe me, in two weeks, you're really you're going to be wanting me to, uh, you'll be screaming at me to come and fill the shelves again. And so they used to put me on these end caps and checkout lanes, and uh, I had colored caps on all the bottles. They looked like candy. Kids loved them, and parents loved it because it was a health product. And by the way, the only I was like the only person in the bottle water business at that time that understood what I had, which was a health product. Nobody else seemed to understand that. Uh, there were, really wasn't a, a lot of bottled water out there. There was uh, Evian, and um, which is naive, spelled backwards, and I made sure everybody knew about that. And uh, then there was something called Naya water, um, and Coca-Cola took over the distrib uh, distribution for that company strictly so they could destroy that bottled water, which is exactly what they did. They took it over, and then they dumped it. And then they started their own bottled water, which is uh, Densai or Densai, whatever you, how do you pronounce that? It's crap. And um, and then, you know, Aquafina came out from Pepsi. Never drink that. It's purified water. You don't want to drink that stuff. So, um, you know, that's how I got going. And again, on the in Target, now there's a place around here called Quality Dairy. I was big in there. That was my big 
uh, my big big customer as well. But the target is where I really you know uh, you know really blew up, and I mean I just couldn't keep them stocked. I sold over seven hundred thousand uh, bottles of water uh, in about a uh, you know less than a five year period. I mean I was really pumping it out. I mean we were labeling by hand. I started out with labeling by hand literally myself and then I got myself a semi automatic uh, labeler and it's just little by little I kept back you know, so I spent that initial five thousand and I figured well, if I if I screw up and if this is doesn't work, I lost five thousand dollars. I didn't lose fifty thousand dollars, you know, I mean, that's what people do. They put amazing amounts of money into a business and then they just lose it because they don't know what they're doing and it's a big risk. And so you start out small and, you know, you see if it works. Because if you can't do it on this scale, uh, you're probably not going to get any, you know, you don't, you got to spend money to make money. That's partially true. But start out small, fake it till you make it. That's what I did. And people were saying, what, you know, what, what, uh, what bathtub did you get out of uh, uh, this water from? What bathtub? I'm thinking, you know, ah, that's pretty funny. And I said, no bathtub, but it was downstairs in my basement. So I started out there, but after six months, I realized, man, these supermarkets are going to control my business. I mean, I, you know, I could see when they when when they wanted to sell my water, they would promote it, and when they didn't, they wouldn't promote it, and it just sat there. And so I said, I got to take control of this, and that's what barely being a business is all about: is control. Uh, you know, want control over every aspect of your business. And, um, you know, I learned about inventory. I was always running out of something. If I wasn't running out of bottles, I was running out of labels. If it wasn't labels, it was the caps. It was always something. So I got Lansing, Michigan's first bottled water store. It was a freestanding building. By a, I rented it from a great guy, Mike Eyde. And I started selling the big bottles um, and uh, the five-gallon bottles. And I, I shipped it over into that business because basically by 1998, uh, Target had, um, you know, they had gone corporate. That's what happens. Uh, you know, in the beginning, you could go to, to Whole Foods. And then, then when they go corporate, well, then you got to go to the main office and talk to a bunch of corporate people and try to sell them your little product. And they, they don't know if it's – all they want to know is, can I put this in every store in, 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 in the country? And so this is what you got. In, and, I mean, I just – you know, I couldn't deal with that. I didn't have national distribution or anything. So once they corporatized, you know, I was planogrammed right out of existence, and Coke, Pepsi, 7-Up, they bought all the shelf space. And that's how they work. You know, I never paid a slotting fee to be up there. It's just, uh, you know, that's just, uh, all that stuff is corrupt. I mean, you, you, when you go into a supermarket, you're not looking at the, the, the products that people really want. You're looking at products that people have the money to put up on the shelf. That's what it is. But, you know, and, and that's a supermarket business. It's, it's a lot different these days with the Internet. Again, I mean, it was no Internet back when I started at all. I got my first website in 1995, one of the first out there, you know, that actually had a website. I mean, a lot of people question why you'd want to have a website. So uh, I got this bottle water store, and, you know, it wasn't too long before somebody walked in with ionized water, alkaline ionized water, Don, Don Strayer. And he introduced me to it, and I thought, well, you know, well, this is interesting, and I kind of learned a little bit about it. Uh, this MLM group that he was representing, they didn't really understand it. They didn't know what was going on. But one day it dawned on me that this had a negative charge, a negative ORP, and it was like a light bulb went on, and I said, aha, you know, it was my, my epiphany moment, my aha moment. I thought, wow, this, now I understand alkaline ionized water. And if you don't know, I wrote a book about um, ionized water called The Miraculous Properties of Ionized Water, The Definitive Guide to the World's Healthiest Substance. And that's what alkaline ionized water is. It, 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 it is the healthiest substance that you can possibly put into your body. So it was, you know, it was like it was all meant to be. And then little by little, people walked in with some spirulina. They called it something different, plant plankton, which it really isn't. Uh, and then I found out it was called spirulina, and then I found I studied it and I researched it. I found about something called chlorella. Um, now I'm the largest importer for organic chlorella in the U.S. Um, and one of the largest importers now is spirulina. That's how, so I started from nothing. That was back in '95. And then somebody walked in with some sprouts, and and I got introduced to raw foods and enzymes. And so through the years, I, you know, decided because people would come in and say, what are your credentials for talking about this? Why? Well, I, I didn't really have any, so I became a certified nutritional consultant. And then eventually I thought, that, that was really interesting. I like that. And then I saw somebody was a master herbalist, and I said, wow, well, that looks cool. And I took that, and I became a master herbalist. And then I became a naturopathic doctor. That took me about, you know, seven and a half, almost eight years to, to get all those degrees and everything. 
uh, lots and lots of books to read and people to talk to and a answer all these you know long tests and these quizzes and write papers or I had to write a dissertation people think you know you got to uh, you know, you got to be in a classroom and talk to people, and it just isn't true. I mean, I really learned a lot. Most of what I've learned about health is through experience, that's for sure. So that's that's how I kind of first got going, and then after a while, uh, you know, it just kind of snowballed, and uh, um, you know, I started writing books, and I wrote my Confessions of a Bodybuilder, uh, which was about uh, spirulina, chlorella, ionized water, raw fruits and vegetables, and I did that because I had all these pamphlets. And nobody had really, you know, written anything on this subject. And I said, this is what you want to do to be healthy. You want to use spirulina and chlorella for your protein. You want to use raw fruits and vegetables uh, for your food source and, and cut down on the cooked foods. Uh, I went from being, once I found spirulina and chlorella, I went from being a vegetarian, which is okay, to being a complete vegan. That's much, much better because it's cooked animal protein that's very, very you know, dangerous for your health. Uh, people can't get over that. They're used to it. They're set in their ways, and it takes a lot of discipline to eat the way I eat and live the way I li live. But now I, I could never do it any other way. Um, you know, on the rare occasion I'll eat something I'm not supposed to. It just is, uh, you know, I knew I shouldn't eat that. So, you know, after a while you just want to put things into your body that that f make you feel good and bring you health. And here I am, 64, still running a six-minute mile and my blood works perfect so I know I'm doing the right things and um, so you know I want to share that my latest book is The Cure in the Mirror Nature's Protocol for Surviving Cancer so I've gone from some guy in his basement bottling water to writing books about cancer I mean it took me it took me a long time I mean that was you know it's been 28 years this took me three years to write this book but I've written a bunch of other books on health I wrote one called Silver the Miracle Mineral the end of infectious disease because I, I almost I want to say I almost died, but I got very, very sick from meningitis, and uh, I got to China, and it was the, the silver that really uh, saved me, um, you know, from, uh, from you know, you know, maybe <laughs> from dying, or maybe at least not having my entire ch uh, trip ruined. I just got there, and I got really felt terrible. And I'd already been through it, so the silver kind of saved me from it. So I wrote a book about that. It's actually about a 50, and that's available on audio, uh, Audible right now. It's on Audible. Um, and this is on Audible. So I'm very proud. It was a lot of work to, put the, to record those and put them on there. But this is what I've done. This is how I got started. And it was just little by little. Again, I didn't go into this business, boy, one day I'm going to become a naturopath. It just didn't happen that way. Um, you know, uh, I, Little by little, people kept introducing me to things. Live blood analysis, I did that for years and years. Um, it was really fascinating stuff. I don't do it anymore because, for me, it's always recommending the same things. And my protocol has never really changed. I've learned a lot more, but the basis of my seven-component health protocol, uh, which I laid down in a book called The Seven Components of Great Health, Achieving Great Health, uh, it's in its second edition. And, you know, I laid it out in that, and this is really my entire health protocol. And... Um, you know, which is seven components, and and uh, you know that's what I've been doing for all these years. That's what this is based on. Same thing, but I geared it toward cancer. And of course, in this, I tell you why you don't want the medical establishment, why they're worthless when it comes to infectious and chronic disease. Uh, they're good for injuries. They're good for sports medicine. They're good for uh, physical therapy, this kind of thing. But for anything else, uh, when it comes to disease, chronic or infectious they don't know what they're doing and uh, you know what's going on today in the world is a perfect example of it they don't have a clue so that's how I got started out of my basement 1993 my first big year uh, I started in uh, 93 but my first big year here's my favorite famous thing here for that gives you the amount of money I made for each year or each month for about the first couple of years and it's the first month uh, it was uh, six one thousand six hundred and twenty six dollars that was in the first month uh, that I ever worked uh, and it kind of went up and down and you know after you know a couple years I was making you know nine ten thousand dollars a month and uh, that was a lot of money and you know I kept my overhead down and I did all the delivery I did everything myself and I sl slowly hired people through the years expanded my business got into other products and here I am 28 years later so that's how I got going uh, I've been asked that many, many times, uh, it, but again, it's always keeping, uh, you know, make sure, I made 
a profit from the first day I got into business. Just make sure, you know, if you get into business, that you're making more money than you're spending. And you got to look at that very, very closely because so many people, they just lie to themselves and they get deeper and deeper into debt. And pretty soon they owe 100, 200, 300,000 on a business and they're never going to recoup that. And they go bankrupt or if they're, you know, or, you know, the laws have changed so much, it's hard to do that the way it used to be. So, uh, you got to stay in control and have control over everything. That's what I got now. Largest importer uh, of spirulina and chlorella. Started out of my basement and uh, writing books like this about cancer, the cure in the mirror, and the nature's protocol for surviving cancer. Uh, that's what I do, and I've been doing it all these years. So uh, it's worked very well. Dr. Bob, I'll see you guys next time.